Hi folks, welcome. And in this video I want to talk about the current hardware situation for the MLIS project. Now this MLIS project is pretty young and hardware is actually a, quite a problem currently. It's, it's a bit of a stumbling stone. But luckily the situation has improved a bit in the last uh, few days. And that's what I want to talk about today. But first some few words about the chips or platform to choose to start with. And we all know Express LIS, it's a really fantastic project, right? And has made available a lot of potentially suitable hardware. But it's based on the ESP32. And this is a bit of a problem for this project, because as I will show you in a second, uh, it has just too few pins and peripherals for what you want. So I anticipate that uh, the project will very quickly outgrow this ESP32 so that it actually becomes a limiting factor for it, right? So therefore I chose the STM32 chipset because here it's very simple. I mean, if you need more pins and more peripherals, you just choose a larger one. And you don't have to actually change your firmware for most of the time. And so that's, that's really simple and easy. Now, of course, the problem is, and it's really a huge stumbling stone, uh, that we have a chip crisis, right? Uh, STM32s are extremely difficult to get. So uh, that's a problem. Uh, but I thought that to as a base for the project, to develop the base of the project, uh, it's a better choice than the ESP32 because, as I said, it will very quickly uh, limit us in what we can do, right? And just to show you what I'm talking about, uh, the different types of transmitter configurations I grouped into these three classes here. And here you can find what I call the standalone telemetry unit. So this is this typical 3DR6 uh, telemetry unit where you just have a use uh, UART port uh, in and out, right, and an antenna. So uh, that's that's not very delicate, so you might also want to have an SBUS input um, so that you can use this thing as a receiver also or transmitter also, right? The other class is the ones where you have a module with, and you can put them into the GR bay of your transmitter. And this is, of course, what you also want to have because this gives you the, so to say, the nicest, smoothest uh, integration. And you can have it in, in two ways. The simple way, the old-fashioned way, where you just have an SBUS input on the module, right? So that, uh, that you just use a PPM signal, or SBUS signal on, on, on one of the pins, right? You also can use the trainer port or whatever. And then uh, the third type is the one where you really use a high-speed bidirectional serial connection between your transmitter module and your transmitter, which gives the best integration of the system, so to say. And this is what uh, all these um, models today are doing, like, like um, the TBS, the multi-protocol, uh, with Ghost, and also Express LRS, of course. And you, of course, also want this to have here. Now, when you look at this chart, you can see already that for, okay, for the standalone, you are happy with an UART and, and, and an antenna maybe, right? But for this uh, GR bay modules, you really want to have more. You want to have multiple CL connections so that you can connect by Bluetooth or wireless so that you can connect uh, to mission planner. You might want to, to be able to connect to an antenna tracker and so on and so forth. So you really need quite a number of CL connections on this device here, right? In addition, you want to have something like an OLED. So even more counts, you also want to have a switch to go through the configurations, right? right? And lastly, potentially, you also might want to have some logging options. So there should be an SD card or something like this. And all these things, of course, they cost pins. So you really need a lot of pins and you just cannot do all that with the ESP32. Right? And what I'm also very eager to do is to have true diversity, so not just antenna diversity, but true diversity, so that you have two SX uh, chips in, in, in the system, and this drives up the pin count even more. So let's talk about the receivers first, and this is the lineup of the receivers which you currently can use. So here first, um, this is here the CFM30 uh, receiver module. 
So it's a commercial system which you can buy. Uh, and that's the receiver part here. And in principle, it's a, it's, it's a quite nice device and does everything we want. It also has an STM32 chip, or I should say it had an STM32 chip because they had to change this chip. So this is version V1 and they had to change the chip because of the chip uh, shortage, right? And unfortunately, my information is that you cannot get this chip anymore, right? So that's, that's, that's a bit sad. Um, so if you have, but if you happen to have such a chip or you have a chance to get such a module, then get it because the firmware can work on it. Uh, it's not... It's a small thing, that's good. It has a power amplifier, which is also good. Um, but otherwise, it's not so nicely designed, so it's, it's, it's difficult to solder to the pads and so on. And that's why I have put it here on the support board to just have some solid and uh, easily accessible uh, connections, right? And I also don't like this, 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 this antenna. I mean, they are so floppy, so I, I don't know. Anyway, but as I said, if you can get such a thing, the firmware will work on that and it will be great. Besides that, I have decide, uh, designed uh, two PCBs um, for building uh, such uh, receivers uh, yourself. And uh, so there are these two things here. So let's first talk about this one. So both have an um, F103 STM chip, right? And this is because the F103 is still somewhat available. So you can get it from AliExpress. You also can take it out of many uh, cheaply uh, available, uh, still cheaply available stuff like the Blue Pill or the CC3D uh, flight controllers, right? So there is some sort of sourcing for this chiphead. What you also can see is that it's not small, right? It's, it's not the smallest receiver on, on the market, right? Uh, this just expresses my skills I or limited skills uh, I have, right? So, but it's not so big that it's unusable. I mean, uh, for any quadcopter, it, uh, which is not tiny, right? It should be just fine, right? It's it's much smaller than, than a SIG radio, for example, so so it should be just fine. What you also can see is that you have here this two ST, uh, SX1280 chips on it, right? So this is full diversity. I mean, this is not yet implemented in firmware, but I suspect that this will not be very far in the future that this will come, right? And what you also can see is that there is no power amplifiers. So this here just has the power which can provide it by this SX chip, which is 12, 13 or 12.5 or whatever DBM. So it's a bit more than 10 milliwatts. So this is not really for the, reaching the largest ranges, right? Uh, but I think that uh, it's fantastic for development. And I think it's also good enough for many uses because, I mean, I would think that if we can get five kilometers or something like this out of that with this 10 milliwatts, then this would be uh, fantastic and would al already um, be good for applications. So I have two of them. This is just more occupied with one of them. And then I've done also this uh, module here where, where, where this E28 from eByte is used. Uh, so the advantage is really that, I mean, you buy this module and it's very easy to solder, right? And also to solder this uh, chicken fat here is, is, is not so difficult, right? So anyone who can solder a flight controller or can solder here <laughs> to the pads of a C module, right, uh, should not have so much difficulties to get this uh, together, right? And uh, so the module just can be bought, can be put onto there. It's, it's easy to solder and it provides 500 milliwatt. So... That's really already something which you could use in real-world applications, right? I mean, going from 500 milliwatts to 1 watts is not so dramatic. So uh, the disadvantage of this here is that it has only one channel, right? So it uh, it has it, it won't have it doesn't have full diversity. I mean, one could probably design a module where you have a second one in here, but uh, I I didn't want it to do that. It's also because I found these modules here a bit expensive. So I, I have two now. I have two more coming. So that's, that's already a bit of a cost. Okay, so these are the two types of transmitters uh, which I done. But I should mention here, and this is what you can see here. So it's, it's, it's the same as this one. But it has here this uh, 
harness here. And this is because this module here can be used as both as a receiver as well as a transmitter. So you, here you have the serial connection. And when you want to use it as a receiver, you can use this pin here, which is an SBUS uh, output, right? But you also can use this pin here if you want to use it as a transmitter, which is an SBUS input. So you can use this as a transmitter module also. And that's why I have actually, that's why I have two of them. And this has here this wires, this wire harness, because this goes into the GR bay to connect to the battery and to the S bus uh, of the transmitter. And this here is to connect to a seal on your transmitter. Okay, so this is the situation here. So let's talk about the transmitters. And this is the lineup of the transmitter modules. And Actually, I should also put this one here, right? As I just explained, this one you also can use as a transmitter module. Uh, so these are the these are the models which can go into the GR bay. And first, this here is the CFM30 transmitter module. Uh, so that's again this this the system which you can buy uh, commercially. Unfortunately, to my knowledge here too, they have changed the chip so that you need to get an older version of that. In principle, it's a quite neat unit. It has a power amplifier of 500 milliwatts, so it's, it's quite strong also, has lots of connectors, internal Bluetooth and so on. Uh, it's nevertheless a bit weird, so you need to do some hardware modifications if you want to do that, use that. It's not very difficult. I mean, as I said, if you can solder this FM32 receiver module, uh, then there's no difficult in doing this with this, this hardware modification. But there are some some things to do, so it's it's it cannot be used out of the box and just being flashed, right? And uh, but as I said, uh, it's not uh, available to my knowledge. So, but if you happen to have one or can get one, so this is a is a good starting point to. to um, in order to really get along, I've designed a PCB here, and that's here this PCB. And uh, you see that's already uh, much more going on here. Um, so this here is using an uh, STM32 G4 chip. And uh, the reason is that the G4, I think, is actually the chip which you want to use. I mean, if it would not be for the chip shortage, I would think that all this uh, STM-based MLS modules should be based on a G4 chip. And But we have a chip shortage. But it happens that every once in a while um, you find Nucleo boards with such chips, uh, either on Mauser or currently on, on, on Reichelt. Right, so where you can just then cut it out and 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 and, and use it. Then so it's 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 far from ideal the situation, but there is at least some situation. So if one is looking out and hunting for it, one can has a chance every once in a while to get these chips. Okay, so you see that it's a bigger one, so it it has quite some pins. So let's uh, look briefly at it. Um, so here you can see, or I'm not sure if you can see it here. Yeah, so you can see the two SX chips. So again, it has the same full diversity uh, option. And uh, it does not have power amplifier. So this is also limited to just this 10 milliwatts. Um, in principle, it's not difficult to put two of these e-byte modules uh, next to each other or what on top. So there would be the space. Uh, I didn't do that um, because I find this e-byte models when you buy too many of them a bit expensive. And uh, I want I want something mostly for development, so it's not not difficult to make an e uh, the e byte models on that. Right, two of them actually um, would be possible. Uh, but I just went along now with this one here, right? And uh, because it has all the other features for development, so you you can see uh, or here you can see where there are leads, right? Where are some buttons? Where is a USB plug? Where is this GR plug? You also can see that there are some pins uh, here. So this is a debug port. It's it's a bit a uh, strange one, so don't talk about that. So here you have uh, the seal connection, so you can have an additional seal. Uh, connection to mission planner or antenna tracker or whatever and here is the seal connection to another to a bluetooth module or a wireless module right here you have the pins the connections to an oled module so it's via i2c i didn't found the pins and peripherals for for spi but i don't think it's it's too bad and here you have the pins for a five five switch uh, uh, yeah, five-fold switch. And I also designed such a 
thing here, right, which is intended to go on top of that, where you have here your five switch. Uh, here you have an HC06 Bluetooth module, and then you can put the your OLED like that. And so this, I thought that this looks good. Uh, unfortunately, this is not totally thought out because uh, it doesn't really fit well uh, here at the corner. Uh, so this, this seal connection is a bit on a weird place, so it would uh, overlap with, with, the, with the buttons here. And also it's not clear how to how to put all the wires uh, for for the antennas, right? <laughs> so uh, it, it's not really perfectly designed. So, um, but uh, for for development, it, 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 I, I think it should, it will do it for at least for me, right? Um, so this is for the transmitter situation. What I should say about all these modules, which this do DI, uh, DIY modules, that they are all not absolutely perfect. They all have little tiny, maybe a pin is missing or a wire could be better and, and so on. So it's nothing which compromises the functionality, but it's not perfect. And here for this one, for example, for some reason, it's difficult to flash it by SVD. Right, so once you get the firmware on it, it's working perfectly, and then that's fine. But somehow it's it, so I made ob obviously something. I I made something wrong with that, right? Okay, uh, so so there will be revisions of these boards. Uh, I don't know when, but there, there will have to be revision revisions with the slide thing. So that's that's. I think I should say that. Yeah, and as last thing for this video, I just want to briefly demonstrate that this stuff is working. So I take this this, this module here, put it into my uh, into my jumper here. So okay, like towards the wrong direction. So it goes like this, right? So let me place the antenna. Let let me bend it forward like this. So so that we have here. <laughs> it's a kind of a thin light antenna, right? So that's in here. So then take such a uh, receiver module and let's install it into my copter here. So it goes here and here. Yes, this looks right. So I can switch on the copter. So it takes a while before, uh, before it uh, boots up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this GPS lead is not yeah. Okay, so then I can switch it on here. Welcome to Open TX. No okay, so telemetry. you see the light. Ah, oh, you know, you see already that here it's on the green, right? Uh, and the telemetry is, has arrived. So we also get here, see, we see here also the statistics. Now the lead has gone blue, so I also can arm this thing now. Right, and then you can see here that I can control the motors. Right, when I, when I move the sticks, or well, it moves like so. Right, so it's receiving something, and I also can disarm. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you for the day. Thanks for your attention, and hope to see you the next time. Bye bye.